Some of the best experiences remembered by participants and programs of the American Youth Foundation are related to living among the trees. Our founders have been involved in youth development programs that promoted active learning in the out of doors instead of in a classroom. By 1925, urban areas were starting to flourish, so living in noisy, smoke-filled cities surrounded by tall buildings was common. Their goal was to establish camps located in remote areas surrounded by tall trees, quiet paths, and lakes for swimming and boating. Both Mara Vista, the Lost Glen in Ossipee, New Hampshire, and Minnewanka, the forested sand dunes of Stony Lake, Michigan, filled that need. These first dwellings were basic tents with wooden floors built by local carpenters and farmers just a few months before the camps opened in the summer of 1925. Simple living close to nature was sought to get away and bring focus to finding your best self by leaving one's usual surroundings and friends. The closer you got to the entrance and registration, the more anticipation grew. Who would be in your cabin this year? Campers brought wool blankets and sheets, clothing, and minimal personal items. Beds were army surplus cots with cotton mattresses. Kerosene lamps provided light after dark. There were no showers and bathing took place in the lake or the creek. Canvas flaps were lowered when temperatures were cool at night or in the case of rain. The sound of water dripping from the canopy of trees onto the canvas roof lasted way longer than the passing storm. A rigorous daily schedule of classes, games, and water activities still allowed for free time to hang around with your camp family for fun conversation, sharing stories of the day, or planning for your council skit. Mornings meant a splash of water from the filled tub basin, quick swipe of your toothbrush, and a glance in the mirror to check your hair, maybe, and then off for morning setup exercises. In the younger camps, there was a rest hour after lunch, a great time to lie down on your comfy bed to read, write letters, or even nap, ready for the next activity. At Mara Vista, cabins appeared early in the 1930s, replacing their tents 20 years before Minnewanka. From the early years, there were regular opportunities at Mara Vista for campers to sleep out away from the main camp villages. Shelters were created and skills in outdoor cooking and survival were developed by both girls and boys. By the 1960s, several unique tent cabins were constructed there. Hogan cabins were a version similar to Native American dwellings. The boys set up teepees, shelters, cooking ovens, and enjoyed sleeping out under the stars. And can you imagine the surprise and thrill of living in a cabin built as a large covered wagon for four weeks? The arrival of cabins versus tents evolved much later at Minnewanka. After 30 years, the tents had seen their day. Much discussion surrounded the new design, which most felt was way too closed in compared with tents. The compromise was an open style cabin with a roof and canvas curtains ready by the summer of 1955. One thing that didn't change from day one at every camp session was cabin inspection. To keep order, practice teamwork, and win points for the shield competition, secret inspectors graded the cleanliness and order each morning, especially on how well sand was removed from every nook and cranny. On the closing day of the Younger Girls Camp in July of 1960, a crisis tested our organization's leadership. During the lunch hour, with all campers in the eating lodge, a fire was discovered in the cabin area. Immediately, everyone moved to safety on the beach while the fire was put out with the help of the staff and local firefighters. Leaders formed a bucket brigade from the creek. Other leaders kept campers singing for hours. 
20 cabins were destroyed. However, a miraculously organized group of staff, volunteers, and local builders from the surrounding community rebuilt and restored them in only three days. Materials and supplies were rushed in, and Older Girls Camp began as scheduled. It was indeed a mark of leadership to adjust. The following summer, cabins were spread out, creating new bays in the Council Circle Draw, Paradise Hill, and Creekside by Stony Trail. Bunk beds, cabins with more enclosed walls, porches, and steps appeared over the years. The double side cabin design originated in villages at Mara Vista. This year, the cabins in both East and West camps at Minnewanka have undergone a complete renovation. Improvements include screens, higher ceilings, new bunk beds, and window coverings that can be opened from the inside. We will continue, as our camp song reminds us, to build the camps and keep them going strong. <laughs>